Welcome back, wonderful souls. Have you ever felt like the forgotten one? Today, we're diving into a story as old as time itself, one that echoes the resilience of the overlooked and the forgotten. We're talking about the tale of Leah, Rachel and Jacob. This story begins with Jacob, a man so deeply smitten by Rachel's beauty that he labored for seven long years to earn her hand in marriage. However, on that much-awaited wedding night, he found himself tricked into marrying Rachel's older sister, Leah, instead. Can you imagine the depth of Leah's sorrow? To be married off, not out of love, but as part of a deceitful plan by her own father? And the pain didn't stop there. Jacob's heart was set on Rachel, which only served to deepen the chasm of rejection that Leah felt. She was the unwanted bride living in the shadow of her younger sister, bearing the weight of being second best. But Leah was strong. She bore children to Jacob, their names echoing her deep longing for her husband's love. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, each one a silent appeal for recognition, for acceptance. Even in the midst of her heartache, Leah's faith never wavered. When her fourth son was born, she named him Judah, proclaiming, this time I will praise the Lord. What a powerful testament to her unwavering belief in God's plan, even in the face of rejection and heartbreak. In this tale of two sisters, Rachel, the beloved yet barren, watched as Leah's family grew. Her own yearning for a child led her down unconventional paths, but even as she finally bore Joseph, her joy was tainted by the bitterness she felt towards Leah's growing brood. But God's plan was at work. From Leah's lineage sprang forth the Lion of Judah, Jesus Christ himself. The overlooked bride became the cornerstone of salvation. Can you picture the heartache Leah must have felt? Being second choice, merely a pawn in her father's scheme? Remember, even if you're feeling like the forgotten one, God sees you, knows your pain, and has a plan for you. Leah's story is a testament to that. Unloved and overshadowed, Leah bore children whose names reflected her longing for Jacob's affection. Her firstborn, Reuben, was a cry for attention, his name meaning, see a son! as if to say, look, Jacob, I have given you a son. Yet Jacob's heart remained with Rachel. Undeterred, Leah gave birth to her second son, Simeon, whose name meant one who hears, a silent plea to Jacob. Hear my pain, acknowledge me. Still, Jacob's love for Rachel was unwavering. Leah, resilient as ever, bore her third son, Levi, meaning attached. With each birth, Leah hoped that this would be the child who would finally bind Jacob to her. But even as Leah's arms filled with sons, her heart remained empty of Jacob's love. Amidst this, her faith in God remained unshaken. When she bore her fourth son, she named him Judah, which means praise. With Judah's birth, Leah's focus shifted from winning Jacob's love to praising God. Her declaration, this time I will praise the Lord, was a testament of faith, a beacon of hope amidst rejection. Meanwhile, Rachel, the beloved yet barren, watched as Leah's family grew. Her heart, filled with yearning for a child of her own, was tainted with bitterness towards Leah. In her desperation, she made unconventional choices. But even with the birth of Joseph, her joy was overshadowed by envy. But God had a greater plan. From Leah, the woman who felt unloved and rejected, came the lineage of the Lion of Judah, Jesus Christ himself. What a marvelous twist of fate. The woman who felt like a rejected stone became the cornerstone of salvation. So remember, no matter how rejected or overlooked you may feel, God is working behind the scenes. He has a plan for you, just like he did for Leah. From Leah's lineage came the Lion of Judah, Jesus Christ himself. The rejected stone became the cornerstone of salvation. Tragically, Rachel's life was cut short, leaving Jacob broken-hearted. The loss of his beloved Rachel was a crushing blow, a seismic shift that left him reeling. But it was in this crucible of sorrow that Jacob found himself at a crossroads. In the depths of his grief, Jacob wrestled, not with man, not with his circumstances, but with God himself. An intense struggle, a battle of wills, a spiritual tug of war that marked a turning point in his life. Jacob's wrestling was more than a physical altercation. It was a soul-searching grappling with his past, his decisions, his regrets. It was a reckoning with his own identity, a confrontation with the man he had been and the man he could become. 
And in the midst of this struggle, something extraordinary happened. Jacob, the deceiver, the usurper, the man who had spent his life striving for what he wanted, surrendered. He surrendered to God's will, to his plan, to his purpose. In this moment of surrender, Jacob's identity was transformed. No longer was he Jacob the supplanter. He was now Israel, the one who wrestles with God. His name change signified a shift in his character, a transformation from a man driven by his own desires to a man who yielded to God's will. And so, out of heartbreak and struggle, emerged a new man, a man refined by sorrow, reshaped by wrestling and renamed by God. He wrestled with God and his name was changed to Israel, signifying surrender to God's will. My friends, if you're feeling rejected, overlooked or unloved, take heart in Leah's story. The legacy of Leah is one of resilience and faith, and it's a testament to the power of God's plan. Leah, the overlooked and unloved wife of Jacob, bore six sons and a daughter. It was from her lineage through her son Judah that King David and ultimately Jesus Christ emerged. Imagine that! The woman who felt rejected and unloved was chosen to bring forth the line of David and the saviour of the world. You see, God's plans are often beyond our understanding. He works in ways we cannot see, transforming our sorrows into joy, our rejections into acceptance. Leah's story is a shining testament to this truth. The woman who was chosen second, who felt unloved and overlooked, was in fact chosen by God for a purpose far greater than she could have imagined. So if you're feeling like Leah, remember her legacy. Remember that from her rejection came the lineage of kings and the saviour of the world. Your struggles, your rejections, they have potential too. They are part of your story, and God can use them in ways you can't even begin to comprehend. Embrace the Leahs in your life, for even the rejected stones can become the cornerstones of his kingdom. God sees you, knows your pain, and has a plan for you.